Hey ladies, welcome to another episode of To The Core, my Friday episode of Revitalized Womanhood. I'm still talking about 2022, what that meant to us as far as our goals and how how that looks for us the year that's already gone by, where we are sitting in our goals that we started at the beginning of the year, where we are now and checking in on where we want to continue, where we want to grow, where we want to be next year, right? Continuing the forward motion, right? Upward motion. Sorry. It's, it's like the middle of the day. So I've been, I've been trying to get things done, putting out little fires here and there. And then I sat down and started taking notes for, for this episode. And I actually went down the rabbit hole. I did. It's really funny because this week is body. I want to talk about body. So for our four core categories in the revitalized sisterhood, I guess you can consider it revitalized womanhood, but in the revitalized sisterhood, our four core categories that we focus on for goal setting and to kind of keep ourselves in alignment are beliefs, bonds, body, biz, right? So the last two weeks you've heard about the beliefs and last Friday you talked, I, you heard me talk about bonds And this week we are talking about body. Body is so obvious when you say it, as in your physical appearance, your physical body, but that's not what I mean. I mean, a little bit of that is, but there's so much more to it, especially for women. There's so much more to it. Body, yes, let's start with the physical body because that is the first thing everyone thinks of about like when you're setting goals or when you're thinking to yourself, you need to change something or, or make something stronger or better. You think of your physical body, right? So you think about exercise, going to the gym or going outside and running or getting on a bike or whatever it is that you do to get your body into motion and make your physical body stronger, your muscles, those kinds of things. But along with that, when you're thinking in terms of working out. You're maybe thinking about it in terms of weight loss or maybe even weight gain. Like for me, I can't keep it on right now because I'm nursing. So for me, it's, I want weight gain so that it can go to the right places for my muscles. Right. But as far as physical exercise, the, the benefit of that is, I think we all know the benefits of physical exercise, but I just want to reiterate it since that is probably the most obvious thing when you hear me talk about body it releases endorphins, so right away, better mood, right? It makes your heart stronger. A stronger heart can pump more blood and with less pressure, right? So there you go. You're already eliminating the possibility of like a heart attack or something, right? Just from moving your body, just from getting regular exercise. And I don't mean you need to go to the gym and be in a spin class every day. I mean, just get outside and go for a walk. Just ride a bike, whatever that means for you, right? Okay. So you're also decreasing your risk of, of diseases like cancer, type two diabetes. Um, you decrease your risk of injury. That's one that is obvious, but you don't really think of it so much so often. So you're, you're increasing your balance by getting physical activity. And depending on what you're doing, you're increasing your balance, having stronger muscles. So those kinds of things will prevent injury because you're, you're not as likely to fall down. Or if you do fall down, your bones aren't as likely to break, right? Cause you've, you've built them strong and, and they can withstand minor falls, right? So, oh, and then into, uh, main, maintaining healthy weight, which, which I already talked about. If you're thinking about this in terms of losing weight or gaining weight, whatever, Uh, simply put, if you are thinking about losing weight, I cannot make this more simple. Do not take in more calories than you burn, right? As, as, because I am not a fitness expert, but I have interviewed with, I have brought on, go back and listen to my Heidi Powell episode. Amazing. She is a fitness expert. Um, you can go check her out any, I mean, there's so much information on physical fitness that I think we are bombarded by it in the media and in the world because it's a very important thing. So I'm not worried about you being able to find sources for that. However, 
I want to discuss some of the things that you maybe don't think about when you think about your body and your physical health. And especially that's what I was talking about. I, I started getting into this and kind of taking notes for it, what, I, what direction I wanted to go. And I went down the rabbit hole with sleep. Okay. Who thinks of sleep when they think about having the most healthy body, right? I do just because right now sleep is so non-existent. No, just kidding. It's getting better. He's two years old, so it's getting better, but he is still in bed with me. He is still somewhat nursing. So, you know, he's, he's still having those funky little, I'm right there. So he's going to wake up. So it's going to wake me up. So yeah, I, every day I look in the mirror and these bags under my eyes, I'm just like, Oh mama. Oh goodness. We're almost done. We're almost there. So for me, sleep is in, in the forefront of my brain. So I don't know if it is for you, but I started looking into, sorry, if you can hear my notes shuffling, I started looking into this for some notes and I went down the rabbit hole. So here we go. Let's start with sleep is crucial for your overall health because it's essential for regulating your hormones. I did not know that. And we're going to get into the hormones later, but sleep is essential for regulating your hormones. And, and it's also part of building memory. I had no idea. I've never heard that before in my life. And you're, you maybe you're thinking, wow, Gina, really? You haven't heard that before. I have not heard that before. So not getting enough sleep can cause problems like diabetes, heart disease, anxiety, even depression. So it's best when you're trying to think in, in terms of not only getting more sleep, but getting better sleep. So a way to get more sleep is, is just simple habits like going to bed even a half hour earlier at night and waking up even a half hour later, you know, those kinds of little tweaks. That's obviously the easiest way to get more sleep, right? But as far as a better sleep, there are tricks to even even getting yourself ready for sleep, like the routine. So why do we think it's normal and okay for us? And maybe you guys have been out of this phase in your life for a while, so you don't remember, but to get your babies ready for bed, to get your kids ready for bed, everyone always talks about routines, right? You do bath time. So you do dinner time, then you do bath time, then you do a story maybe, and or get them in their jammies, do a story, put them in bed, that's their routine, right? So as soon as you start doing this kind of like Pavlov's dog, right? As soon as you turn on the tub, that's kind of starting your kids into thinking, oh, we're getting ready for bed. So the body's doing the same thing. It's kind of, oh, it's time to start settling down, calming down, you know, easing into sleep mode. Next, next. So what I was going to say is why is that okay for our kids, but not for us? So think about that in terms of a routine for yourself. Obviously, it doesn't have to be as specific, I guess it can be, but even just simple as turning off electronics, TVs, your phone, trying to avoid those and overstimulation of your brain an hour before your an hour before you're getting ready for bed. And Okay, so another thing that I didn't even think about is when your body is regulating its own internal clock, something that affects that is exposure to the sun, getting outside. And so it's it's not even necessarily exposure to the actual sun, but it's light, right? Your internal clock is kind of, that's why we turn off lights to go to bed. That's why we make it dark when we put our kids to bed. That's, you know, so our internal clock kind of realizes that's why people up in Alaska have a really hard time, right? <laughs> we do when we go to Alaska, when we get there and we're laying there in bed and it's like one in the morning and it's still light outside. It's like, oh, this is super weird. My body doesn't feel like it needs to go to bed. So that's obviously your internal clock is regulated by the light. So a trick to getting better sleep is introducing yourself to light earlier in the day. And then your body is starting to think that, okay, it's, it's been exposed longer to this light. So by the time it's time for bed, your body's like ready to wind down. It's like, oh, we've already been up for this amount of time. So it's time to wind down, right? Next, the exercise it releases endorphins, which help your mood. 
decreased stress levels, both of which help you relax at night. I was thinking about it more as in like, if you're working out your body, you're going to be physically tired, right? It's if, if I go to the gym and I work out, say, go to a spin class, that night I'm going to be tired versus if I'm just sitting in my office all day doing nothing, that's not going to do anything for my body, right? So exercise obviously is going to help with that. Next is an obvious, and I am a victim of this. I don't know if you are. I am less caffeine, right? Think about limiting your caffeine and think about it as far as chocolate too. That's something that is obvious, but maybe you don't think about before going to bed. You maybe have a little snack or a little treat, a little dessert, right? No, watch out for things that have caffeine in them. That's going to affect, obviously. I can't have coffee, even though I want it. I cannot have coffee or caffeine. Oh man, I want it so bad about two o'clock in the afternoon, right? But I know if I have it, it's not going to be very easy for me to go to sleep. The next thing I actually am very good about because of other reasons after this last pregnancy, but magnesium, I didn't realize that a magnesium deficiency is linked to insomnia. So I should be having the best sleep in the world. Honestly, I take magnesium. So I did not realize that that was linked to insomnia, but it is a natural muscle relaxer, right? It's a natural relaxer for your body. So I guess that makes sense. So think about that, right? Okay. So let's move past sleep because I was learning. So I I could probably, I'm going to find a sleep expert because I'm very interested in this now. You never know what you're going to get into and what's going to be so fascinating when you start on a journey like this, I swear. Okay. So the next one that maybe you don't think about with body, right? So we've talked about physical fitness, right? Physical exercise, then sleep, getting enough sleep and getting quality sleep. Now the next one is breath work for your body. Breath work, I think about for beliefs, for the beliefs category, I think about that for releasing stress and and maintaining some kind of calmness, peace, in my life, right? In my daily, as I go from task to task or scheduled events or running errands, whatever, you have to think about breathing to release the pressure that you're building up from things that are stressing you out. Even if it's maybe you're not thinking about it stressing you out, but the things I didn't think about with breath work, physical things, is it actually, where is it? Creates balanced blood pressure. That's so amazing. It creates balanced blood pressure. It it gives you more time in a deep sleep. So when you have Okay, let me let me go back a little bit because I do not breathe correctly. I guess. It, there is apparently a way to breathe. I think people learn this when they are singers or playing an instrument or in, once you're in yoga you learn about these things. It, it's Ways that like, especially women, we're used to sucking in all day long and holding in our tummies, right? And that's horrible. That's horrible breathing. It it makes it so you can't get deep breaths. You, you want to expand your belly and get these deep breaths, right? And expand your rib cage. Whereas women, we're used to just sucking everything in. And so we're not breathing correctly. You have to retrain it. It's like a habit. It's like anything. It's It's something that has to be trained. It's like yoga. That's why it's a big deal in yoga. It's a practice, right? It's something you have to learn to do. So anyway, go back to this. So breath work, it balances your blood pressure. It gives you more time in a deep sleep, reduces stress. And here's the like, like actual physical proof of good breath work is it's bringing oxygen into your body. So it's physically alkalizing your blood pH. It creates an, an and it creates an anti-inflammatory effect. Okay, these are things I didn't even realize. I didn't even think about. I just knew that oxygen into your blood is good, right? Oxygen not getting into your blood is bad. So yeah, think about those kinds of things when you're thinking about your body. Think about breath work. There are lots of different things you can look up. I, I know there's different breath work that I have been exposed to. Square breathing, square, is that what it's called? The square breath? I just learned this last weekend at our retreat. The women and I just learned how to do, is it square breathing? Anyway, 
360 breathing for working out and doing building a good core for working out. I know about that one. So, and fire breathing, that's yoga, right? Fire breathing in your throat. Anyway, there are plenty of different types of breath work out there. So maybe we'll get into them later and we'll go from there. Next. Okay. Where did I go from here? Water intake. So water intake is obviously we don't want to be dehydrated. We would die. We would die without water, but some other things you don't think about. So when, what is enough? That's what I was curious about. And I know I've heard it all the time in, in different places, but a very, very simple, simple guide is basically take your weight in pounds. So if I'm 120 pounds, right? You cut that in half and then drink that many ounces. So 60 ounces in a day, right? Okay, that's just an easy guide. Cut your weight in pounds in half and drink that in ounces. So that's essentially what is supposed to be enough for me. So things that drinking enough water helps with, it helps you feel less hungry, which is a great thing if you are trying to lose weight, right? Better digestion, it aids in better digestion, less heartburn, helps with your bowel movements. I mean, come on. Your skin is moisturized. That's amazing. I know when I, I, one of the things that tells me I'm not getting enough water is my lips get really dry. So that's kind of my external force telling me, reminding me to drink more water. Let's see. It's easier to focus. Obviously I need lots more water because I, you know, let's keep me on track here. So water is good. We all know that, but in the body category, we don't think about it in terms of it's, it's for survival, right? We don't think of it in terms of we need it for all of these other reasons. It's just for survival. So we want to make sure we're getting enough water. So we've got fitness, physical fitness for your body. We've got sleep, breath work, water intake. Next, we're moving on to gut health, which I'm really excited for you to hear my episode I've recorded with my friend, Leah Brueggemann. She's got a podcast called Balancing Hormones Naturally, and she discusses a lot of these kinds of things with me in that episode. It's coming out the first Tuesday in January, I believe. I will send out plenty of reminders for that. It's a perfect episode to kick off January with because we're thinking about these things. I mean, I'm leading into it, right? December, all of my Friday episodes are about thinking in terms of goals, goal setting, you know, self-improvement, growth, development, right? So that one I thought was an amazing one to kick off January with. It's going to be a good one. Okay, gut health. Having good gut health aids in digestion of the foods we eat, absorbs nutrients. If your gut health is imbalanced, your immune system isn't working properly and your serotonin and hormones won't either. What I hear when I hear that, what, I, what I'm what i saying to myself is, women, if your gut health ain't right, you are going to be ornery, moody, all the things, right? So think in terms of that next time you're you're thinking about the body category, right? Not just Not just physical activity, but things like gut health. And the next one is a very, very important one. We have had multiple, two episodes recorded for this topic. Hormones. Our hormones, lady. ladies. Sorry about that. Chris Morris from Scottsdale, Arizona. We recorded two episodes about this. I had my blood work done and he went over what that basically said about me and my physical health as far as hormones goes, right? So all around having balanced hormones and knowing whether or not they are balanced. And I'm not talking, I'm going to remind you, remember the episodes with Chris Morris. Remember just going to your normal doctor's office, your general, what are they called? General family practice doctor, right? Just going to them. They're not going to tell you, they're not going to dive into these very detailed descriptions of your hormones of, of being balanced or imbalanced. They look at it on a chart that is just so 
wide and the range is so huge that if you are low, but you still fall in that range, they're not going to care. If you are high, but you still fall in that normal quote unquote, right? Normal range. They're not going to care. They're not going to look at it and say, Oh, we've got a problem here. So think in terms of places like where Chris Morris works at new level wellness, places like that, that actually get your blood work done and dive deeper into these questions you're having. He's, he had some really great insights just from people that were coming in with a problem and they're like, uh, this feels weird or this is off. And he actually found a really good story. He actually found something that this guy had a problem with him that no one would have ever found. I mean, he maybe would have just died, right? But Chris found it because they were doing his blood work. So it's just very beneficial. Rick and I have already looked into things in terms of how can we incorporate this with the sisterhood so that I know that all of my members are getting this done. Anyway, it's still in the early stages of thinking about that, but that's how important I think it is. So all around, just good. Let me tell you why. When your hormones are balanced, it will improve cardiovascular, neurological, bone health, helps with energy, sleep, mood, memory, focus, here's the big one, sex drive, right? If our hormones are out of balance, we're not going to have one or we're going to have one that's crazy, right? And then hair and skin health. So these are just obviously a couple of things that are beneficial when you have your hormones in balance. You're going to be just, I, like I said, all around just better, just better off, right? So, wow, I think we just buzzed through those as quick as a whip. I'm going to reiterate again for the body when we're thinking about in terms of body here at the revitalized, in revitalized womanhood and in the revitalized sisterhood. Sorry, I sound like I'm losing my voice. We think more, we think past just the physical exercise. We look at things as far as, yes, the physical physical exercise side of things. Yes, it is so good. You have got to move your body. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's just going for a walk every day. You have got to move your body, right? So physical fitness, water intake, sleep, breath work, gut health, and making sure your hormones are in balance. Okay? Ladies, woof, we made it through. Made it through another episode. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope something in that triggered something in you that you were like, aha, that's not what I'm doing. Actually, all of these things I could be better at. I know that. So my goals are pretty easy to set because I have a lot of them. It's focusing in on the one that needs the most attention. I have used this example so many times this week, I swear. It's like, imagine one of those people in the circus or whatever, in one of those shows like Cirque du Soleil or whatever, and he's spinning all of these plates, right? He's got the plates spinning on his hands. He's got the plates spinning on his feet. He's got the plates spinning on his knee, on his nose, whatever. So they're all spinning at different rates of speed, right? They're not all going the same rate of speed. So you have to kind of check in with yourself, with your beliefs, with your, with your bonds, with your body, with your biz categories and, and think, or even have that intuition of, uh, something's off. I can't, maybe you can't quite put your finger on it, or maybe it's just the elephant in the room and it needs to be addressed. But one of those plates is going to slow down way faster than the other ones. And that's the one that needs attention. So maybe if you think of it in terms of that, it makes it less daunting. You don't have to focus on all the plates at once. You can just focus on the one that's maybe needing to, you need to spin, right? To get it caught back up with the other ones. So hopefully that's helpful. I really, really appreciate you ladies. If, if anything in these episodes, even my Tuesday episodes with the, my interview episodes with the revitalized womanhood or my Friday episodes of to the core, if anything is like you're loving the message or you know somebody that you would love to share the message with, please, please share it. Please don't hang on to that information for yourself. It is here to be shared. We want all the women to feel 
like they have purpose and impact and that they are being their best selves, right? So don't hold on to that information. Please pass it along. I really appreciate it. I do not have ads on any of my episodes just for the reason that I don't think you need it. It's nothing that I've, no one's ever come to me and said, Hey, I would love you to do this ad. And I've thought you're right. Everybody in the world should listen to this. So if I do start doing ads, that's probably why, because I think everybody in the world should hear it. However, at this time, I don't gunk up my episodes with ads, and I would really appreciate if you would show me the love and share anything from my Instagram, from my Facebook, from my podcast episodes, or go over to revitalizedwomanhood.com, anything on the website. Oh, also, this is a good one. We got all of our first merchandise. If you're looking at the YouTube episode right now of this recording, I'm wearing our Sherpa. It's got the Revitalized Womanhood logo. And let's see if I can get around my microphone here. The peony on the sleeve, that's our merchandise. This is our first, our first merchandise. I have a crop top. I have a t-shirt now. I have a zip up hoodie. Uh, we have the 2023 planner is coming out. It's already ready. It's just being printed. So it'll be ready for 2023 and a beanie. Yes, I believe that's all so far. So the store is coming to the sisterhood website, excuse me, to the revitalized womanhood website coming soon. So make sure you check back in and, and watch for that stuff. Again, I appreciate you ladies. Thank you so much. We'll see you next, next week.